Without further ado, I would like to introduce our wonderful presenters today. We are joined by Andy Beck, Director of Choral Publications for Alfred Music, and Krista Hart, Associate Choral Editor and Alfred Music Clinician. Andy and Krista, I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Michaela. Good morning, everybody. It's fun to see in chat where everybody is from. Good morning, Krista. Good morning. How are you today? Doing well, ready for a great session. Yes, me too. I'm excited. We have so many wonderful resources and choral music to talk about today, but I always like to start by surprising Krista with a question. It's my new thing, Krista. <laughs> since, okay. since we're elementary <laughs> teachers right now, um, you know, I, there's no doubt that most of us tuning in right now can remember a point as an elementary kid or a thing about elementary music class that really turned us on. I feel like e those of us that became music teachers, there was something we loved early on. Like for me, it was just the idea. My, I mean, I, ha I absolutely loved elementary band, elementary choir, elementary music. But the one thing I remember most of all is an activity that so many of us do where you listen to a piece of classical music and you have some art supplies to kind of diagram what you feel and the emotion. That one has stuck with me ever since being a kid. That one oh, really that turned me on. I nice. wondered if you had a similar idea. <laughs> yeah, that's tough to choose. There were uh, a lot. Um, I, I mean, I of course loved it anytime we got the rhythm instruments out, you know, so even <laughs> if they were being passed around or whatever. But you know, also my teacher did a really cool job of making it like a special event when we sort of graduated to two part octavos rather than just singing out of the textbook. Yeah. So I thought it was the coolest thing when we when we got octavos. We were like the big kids now. Oh yeah, that's right. It's the big kid music. I actually yeah. feel like I've heard teachers <laughs> use that term a little bit. <laughs> well, that's fun. I think we're going to get started with some warm ups as I always do. So it may have been a long time since your kids gathered and worked on singing together. So I want to get back to some basics. My warm-ups today are all about posture, and they do come from the Vocalize series. The Vocalize series, thankfully, keeps growing and growing. We not only have the book, this is the main book with the 45 exercises that teach techniques, but there's the Canon book there in green. And this past year, while on quarantine, we came up with this idea of slide sets. There are two slide sets which you allow you now to not only send the slides out on your learning platforms if kids are on their own, but when you're in class, you're gonna be able to project big, beautiful slides showing off the exercises. So what this means is you have now projected in the room maybe a sight singing exercise. This is something you could sight sing. If the kids have never done this one. The directions are printed here. Most importantly, look at that audio icon. You're gonna tap right there in the slide and have a recorded accompaniment that will take the group through various keys of singing the same tune, which is a great way to warm up your group. And the lyrics are teaching something you want your kids to know. In this case, they describe great standing posture. Feet are firmly planted on the ground. Knees and hips and chest align. Shoulders are relaxed, arms hanging down. Head is balanced on the spine. Let's sing this at home twice with the accompaniment. Good, good, good. Now, the whole purpose of the Vocalize series is to help you as the teacher create some really known um, phrases that you might say. Let's say catchphrases or shortcuts to improving technique. So 
Here's one that's about good sitting posture. You may not know this one. It comes from Vocalize Sing Along Slides Set 2, and there are unique exercises in Set 2 that have never been printed in a book. This one is all about good sitting posture because, let's face it, how many times in a rehearsal when your kids are sitting and resting their feet do you have to remind them about good sitting posture or you get the slouchies? We don't want that. So here's a little exercise. Here's the vernacular you're going to be able to call upon. Remember, students, we are standing from the waist. Think about it. You may be resting the feet and sitting in a seat, but from the waist up, everything is still aligned as if you were standing. We will sing it twice through, once with the main text, then we'll change key and sing the optional text to see how I talk about sitting in a chair. Here we go with the music. Yeah, like the backrest isn't even there, kids. Ignore that backrest slide right up to the front of your seat for a really good seated posture. Next time you see those slouchies, you're just gonna say, remember, we're standing from the waist. Let's get started with a fun opening number. If you tuned in last year, you may remember a song or two including this one. But let me tell you, there's a whole new set of music come out because creative people were locked down in their homes over the last year and our authors came up with some wonderful new things. I just wanted to open with Music Is Once More. It's such a special song to me that was a commission with a group in the Midwest. For It was actually middle school age singers, but we did a two-part voicing here. Those singers were handed this writing prompt by their teacher just an index card that says music is dot, dot, dot. And they were asked to write down a few ideas, a sentence, some fragments. What does music mean to you? Music is dot, dot, dot. Those ideas were sent to me. I took all their ideas and put them into a rhyming uh, text that serves as our lyrics. When we get over to page 11, you see there are some narrations during one of the interludes. Those narrations were taken directly from the answers from the students in Piper City, Illinois, but I encourage you to do the same writing exercise with your own students and let them create their own individual narrations for the interlude. Let's review together. Music is Sing Along at Home now. Music is a feeling that comes from deep inside, a way to show emotion that cannot be denied. It's a colorful expression, an amazing work of art. It's beauty.
Yes, I hope at some point we all have a chance to return to the stage and perform and what a nice time it will be to celebrate how important music is. You know, the pandemic took a lot of things away from us, but it did not erase the music that's really inside of us. And as we're coming out of the pandemic, we get to share with our community of musicians, young and old. So I'm greatly excited for that. The next piece is for your very youngest singers. This is called The Puzzle. Now, when you hear The Puzzle, I want you to notice, hopefully, that I've tried to represent a puzzle in some of the sound and musical choices. Like there's some choppy accompaniments. If you think of little pieces scattered all over the place, eventually those pieces come together and it's a little more connected singing that's kind of showing the progress of the puzzle the directions or, or the lyrics sort of take us through like from the beginning when the pieces are all scattered to when they do start to come together and it's sort of symbolic for like how voice parts work you will notice that i create one melody that uses you know notes and rhythms a uh, positive space notes and rhythms and while another part has the negative space of what? Rests. And when they go together, look at that, it fits together like a puzzle. Not only does this symbolize what's happening musically, but it has a little bit of a message for how we live our lives when we have different points of view. Maybe the pieces are just scattered, not broken, but when we can fit them back together, there'll be a wonderful work of art, the puzzle.
So when you teach that to your kids, you have a great opportunity to really teach and reinforce dynamic contrast and really get very good at that staccato articulation, the separation of pitches. So the form of that song is basically a partner song. You learn a melody, you sing a second melody. The third time around, they stack together to create the feeling of harmony, but it's easier than homophonic harmony because you're not having to sing the same words at the same time on different notes, but very unique melodic content that fits together. That's a partner song. Those are wonderful for young singers. If you're trying to get your group from unison to harmony, partner songs are a critical step. Here's a new partner song collection by Mary Donnelly and George Street. There are 10 partner song arrangements in Partners in Song, and we have a little video to tell us more. Partners in Song, 10 playful partner songs for young singers, arranged with new words and music by Mary Donnelly and George L.O. Street. familiar song plus an original counter melody equals instant harmony. This fun-filled collection gathers familiar folk songs, spirituals, and holiday tunes into a practical resource you can use on stage and in the classroom all year long. Reproducible singer pages included in the book make it easy for students to find and mark their individual lines, which are guaranteed to develop part singing skills. PDF song sheets and audio are included on the enhanced CD or download these assets online. I'm now going to turn it over to my co-host and colleague, Krista Hart. Thanks, Andy. Well, along with partner songs, another great way to build those part singing skills is rounds and canons. And those are especially useful if you have been away from uh, ensemble singing for a while and need to rebuild those skills, or you need something that will come together very quickly. Well, a merry round is a cheerful, traditional English round. Uh, we are gonna trade leadership on the canon as we go through and it modulates up with each verse. Then on the final verse, we add a descant and followed by just a few measures of harmony to rehearse. Best of all, you can perform this piece year round because in addition to the general text, Russ Robinson has given us an optional text for holiday programs. There is a piano tracks accompaniment available for this piece. You can download all our piano tracks accompaniments for these new pieces on alfred.com if you want just the individual track or you can get them on the piano tracks 13 CD. Let's listen to a merry round.
teaching piece. Next up, Kyle Peterson made a big splash last year with his piece, Bringers of Noise. If you haven't heard that one, please check it out after the session. His newest piece from Alfred is Ubuntu, and this is based on a South African idea of community and caring for each other. This is an energetic exploration of that philosophy, and it offers a lot of opportunities for you to customize a truly unique performance. First off, there are some percussion parts, and you can either add to or subtract from those parts based on whatever your group can accommodate. There's a lot of call and response singing, so you could feature a soloist from your own choir, a guest soloist, maybe someone from the community on that call part. And then one of the key aspects of this piece is spoken word. And of course, Kyle gives you a fully notated uh, part for this, but he encourages you to use it as a starting point for a conversation with your singers about what they would like to see in their communities and then having the kids write their own lyrics for, or yes, their own lyrics for the spoken word section. So lots of opportunities for a diverse and dynamic performance. Ubuntu by Kyle Peterson. There is a word in South Africa, Ubuntu, which means that we are all connected in a very real way. When we live Ubuntu, humanity thrives and the world becomes a better place. I share with you, I share with you, you share with
Okay, now I want to share a few resources with you. First, a great idea borrowed from history and English classrooms, Reader's Theater. Anna Whitlett has put together a collection of brief, entertaining, and educational scripts that depict historical events in music. It's just the kind of thing that's going to bring a big burst of energy into your general music classroom. Reader's Theater is a strategy for developing reading fluency and public speaking skills. Students develop confidence as readers, and they learn to read with expression by using the full range of their voice, facial expressions, and physical gestures. All those things that translate so nicely to choral singing as well. And all of this takes place in a very cooperative uh, situation that really encourages collaboration. The scripts teach everything from Guido D'Arezzo developing music notation to Marian Anderson performing at the Lincoln Memorial to hip hop emerging in the Bronx. Each script has a teacher's page that gives you background music suggestions, prop ideas, and discussion questions. So it, you can really set the stage in your classroom to really get everyone in the spirit. Then encourage your students to get in character, try out accents, and really act out. If you want to make this a performance opportunity, you could do that really easily by combining a few of the scripts that are on a common theme, and you could present it for a school assembly or an informants in your classroom. These Reader's Theater scripts are also standards-based. The national standards ask students to place artistic ideas and works in their proper context for deeper understanding. And so answering questions like why is a particular style of music worth studying or how does music help us understand our own history? Well, the actor's account of famous and not so famous musical moments can help answer those questions and make a connection between a style of music and the time and place that it came from. Plus, they're just fun. Next is Music Go Round. It's a classroom resource that I developed. Uh, it's a reproducible collection of 100 puzzle pages for young musicians. You'll get some classic puzzles like word searches, but also some fun new ones like rhythm hunts, musical mix-ups, and more. And this is covering, these are all covering concepts that you're already teaching in your elementary general music classes. These puzzles are great for bell work, simple assessments, lesson extensions, substitute teachers, uh, and you can photocopy the pages from the printed book. And with the printed book, you also get a PDF version that you can access from home or from work or wherever it is that you're teaching from. So that's Music Go Round. And then my final resource to tell you about is one that is actually only available in PDF form. It's Music Tivities. Music Tivities resources are collections of 20 adaptable activities that can be used in class or for distance learning. There are two sets full of creative and fun activities by several different authors you can see listed there. Each set has lessons um, divided into beginning, intermediate, and advanced levels, and that spans roughly from K to 8. Uh, so the really innovative part of music activities is that these are PDFs with student-facing directions, linked audio and video content, and fillable answer boxes. This PDF format is going to make it very easy for you to print from or if you want to distribute in class, or you can project them in class or set them up as a, a center for individual students in your classroom. And of course, if you need materials for distance learning, these are perfect for that as well. Here's a little video demonstration about set two that will explain how this all works. Music activities set two, 20 adaptable activities for distance or classroom learning. This remote ready resource for general music classes offers standards-based lessons and features student-facing instructions, linked audio and video content, and fillable answer boxes. Let's take a look inside. The lessons are grouped by levels, beginning, intermediate, and advanced, spanning roughly from kindergarten to eighth grade. The national standards and musical concepts are listed for each. In this beginning level lesson, students explore the instruments of the orchestra. Click the play icon to hear musical examples, then complete the assessment by typing directly into the boxes 
or printing to record answers on paper. Here's an intermediate level lesson called EarBase. Students will create their own EarBase, listen for how the baseline changes in listening examples, then reflect on what they've learned. Let's look at this advanced level lesson called Careers in Music, where students will explore types of jobs available in the music industry, research requirements, determine skills needed, write a job description, and reflect on their own career goals. Here's how you can use this product in your classroom. For distance learning, you could distribute these lessons through Google Classroom, Seesaw, or other uh, platforms, or email them. You can ask students to record their performances with their phone or computer, conduct these lessons online in a group meeting like Zoom, Meet, or Teams, Many of these worksheets are fillable so the student can type their answers directly in and save them. They could be printed if you want to do a paper and pencil assignment, use the drawing tool in a PDF reader, and students can scan or photograph their work and then submit it back to you. Teachers can assign individual lessons by extracting pages using the editing tools in a PDF reader like Adobe Acrobat. Download music activities set to today. I just love those. And you know, this is one of the positive things that I think has come out of this last year where we learned to teach in totally different formats. Now we have all kinds of innovative and creative resources, just like music activities that are gonna be so useful and fun for your students. I have to show you my favorite thing I have learned this entire year is that ear base activity. Look, I've got a piece of yarn. It's quite long, it dangles to the floor. I tied a little loop at the top. I've got it on my index finger. Trust me, you're going to want to try this later because it'll blow your mind. You don't think it's going to work, but I tuck the end, the floor end goes under my foot so that I can get it taut. I stretch this up to my ear flap, which I just realized now wearing headphones, it works on a headphone as well. And now I can sort of pluck my ear base and by making the string tighter or looser, the pitches truly change. I know you can't hear anything, but in my ear, I very clearly hear I very clearly hear those notes. So then I could play along with 12 bar blues or, uh, you know, bluegrass, anything that has a strong bass line. Last week I was in a conference and I taught the group of how to play a chord progression one, four, and five. And then I asked them, what song could we play? And the answer is pretty much everyone all the songs. <laughs> How about some choreography? Our next piece is called Wipeout. Yes, it's the famous old uh, beach party song by the Safaris. Now this song doesn't have a text, so I wrote a really beautiful, inspiring poem that goes something like this. Da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da. So those are your lyrics. Let me show you some choreography. Maybe I can go full screen. We're at the beach, so we're gonna go swimming. Over your right, over your left, over your right. I want you doing this at home. Close the door so your husband doesn't make fun of you. You're swimming for four, three, two, one. Then we boogie front, boogie back, boogie front, boogie back. Okay, what else can we show you? Two elbows, they're about uh, shoulder height. Open them twice, then a clap. But we're gonna move two step touches to our right. I'm in a chair, so I'm not really gonna go anywhere. One and two, clap, and then the other direction. One and two, clap. Give me two swims only, and we'll end the verse with a dive. So left hand, hold your nose so you don't get water up there. And then this um, index finger kind of squiggles. Of course, if I were up on my feet, I'd really jump to the floor there. That's so fun for your kids. Then it goes into a simple call and response of rhythmic patterns. Some of them are on your legs. Some of them are claps, and you'll have lots of fun there. So you're going to see the choreography go by above the music, and I want you dancing along for four. Then we boogie to the front. Then we're going to swim. It's here, two, three, four, and boogie to the front and the back. 
then the elbows. Da, 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 two swims and the dive from the top. Let's do it. Yeah, that's super fun. That song, of course, is available as a two-part, as a three-part mix, and it's also part of the next musical I'm going to share. This is a musical called Hawaiian Beach Party. It's not only a crazy, fun beach party, but it's also a bit of an education in Hawaiian culture and customs. We worked with an expert from Hawaii named Amanda Lippert. She's the past president of Hawaii MEA. She's had her whole teaching career in elementary music in Hawaii. Hawaii, and so she was a wonderful cultural guide. Amanda taught me a word I didn't know, and it's the word kumu. Kumu in Hawaii means teacher or guide. It's a little bit more spiritual and powerful than the word teacher, but it means a great respected expert. So in her classroom, she's not known as Miss Lippert. She is known as Kumu Amanda. So we created a character in this script, Kumu Leilani, who serves as our cultural guide. Here's a video to tell us more. Hawaiian Beach Party, a 30-minute staycation presentation for two-part singers by Andy Beck and Brian Fisher. Hosted by Principal Peterson and Kumu Leilani, our cultural guide, the kids at this party not only sing and dance to several Hawaiian hits, they also learn about the traditions, beliefs, and language of the land. Ooh, Hawaii. Hawaii is a land of many traditions, and one of their most treasured is the enchanting dance called hula. There is a Hawaiian
Hawaiian proverb that says that the land is chief and we are its servants, so we must all care for the earth. Ooh. Yes, Malama Aina honors everything in this wonderful world. Trees of green and red roses too I watch them bloom for me and you And I think to myself What a wonderful world Kealika what? Kealika I visited there as a kid. That's a place? Sure it is. It's a little vacation spot on the big island. Pronunciation guides and production notes were created with the help of Hawaiian experts to ensure that your staging, costuming, and decor are both effective and authentic. Before we go, there's just one more thing. What's that? How about we all do our best to share aloha with each other and our world? Yes, 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 yes. Perhaps you don't have time to do a 30-minute musical like that, but you like the idea of thematic programming with a couple songs on the theme of Hawaiian Beach Party. That's where the next arrangement comes in. You heard just a little bit of it in the video we just saw, my arrangement of What a Wonderful World. This arrangement was inspired by that artist Israel Kamwakawi Wole. He's that large uh, Hawaiian guy with the little ukulele. This is inspired by his arrangement. Now, if you have classroom ukuleles or you know someone who plays, chord symbols are provided throughout this octavo. It makes a really nice accompaniment for you to do. Let's check it out. What a wonderful world.
at least one of you answered in chat that you do have classroom ukuleles, which are sort of the new recorder or a way to study harmonics within a general music class. Um, I wanted to share a quick video about a new resource all about getting your kids to play the ukulele in class. These are 10 lessons that lead students quickly to playing along with pop songs. Let's look at the video for more. Ukulele Explorer. 10 ukulele lessons with strum along songs by Daniel Bayert and John Stone. A must have resource for any music classroom equipped with ukuleles. The creative pair of authors, one a general music teacher, the other a private ukulele instructor, has assembled an amazing interactive journey to quickly get your kids playing a host of familiar pop songs, including Roar, Best Day of My Life, Over the Rainbow, Riptide, and more. To begin, touch any of the islands to navigate to a specific lesson. Each lesson starts with tuning the instrument, then introduces a chord and a strum pattern. Next, incorporate the chord or pattern into a brief exercise for isolated practice before strumming along with an engaging performance piece. The culminating activity for each lesson is an interactive assessment. In addition to the software, reproducible PDFs of chord diagrams, ukulele charts, and singer pages for each song are provided. Embedded with fret diagrams, hand position photos, rhythmic chants for every new pattern, helpful getting started screens, plus appealing demo and play along tracks, the adventure is only a few clicks away. Ukulele Explorer is compatible with all interactive whiteboards and both Mac and PC operating systems and can even be operated with just a computer and a digital projector. The software and PDFs can be accessed through the included CD or as a download. Visit alfred.com or contact your favorite music retailer for more information about Ukulele Explorer. I'm only Yeah, it's it is amazing and fabulous and I rarely talk about prices in a session but last week when I presented this live the teachers said and it's $35 that's got to be a misprint are there zeros missing and I said I don't think so it is a $35 product and I believe at the end of today Michaela's even going to give us a way to get a little bit of a discount so it's just a wonderful resource and really affordable does anybody have a bigger budget than they had in the past? Probably not. So I know pinching pennies is important. So it's great when Alfred can price their things in a way that we can easily afford them for our classrooms. Ooh, some more choreography is next. This is for a holiday tune. So let me set the stage for you. Um, it's finally Christmas time, the day where you get to open the presents. The kids have been held back. We used to have to sit at the bottom of the staircase from upstairs on Christmas morning. We were not allowed to enter the living room or get to that Christmas tree and those gifts till mom and dad had everything in place. And, you know, we had our breakfast or whatever it was going to be. Then it was like, run to the living room and tear into those packages. What happens? Ribbons, wrapping paper, gift bags go flying everywhere. Picture this scene. And we've called it a gift wrap riot. Now, when you hear the music, it's obvious what the choreography is going to be because it's in the style of a hand jive. Everybody knows the hand jive, right? If you make the screen bigger for me, I'm going to show you what we do in the chorus after the hand jive is over. We do a little bit of a worm to the right with a snap, worm to the left. And the more wormy you do it, the more fun it is. Good. Then take your right hand and brush the shoulder, brush the shoulder, okay? Having a gift wrap riot, do it again. Ba, 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 be, ba. Now we're sort of saying no, 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 no in the next part. So I start by going open twice, close twice, then in and out and in and out. I think of that strangely as half note here, half note here, then quarter, 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 Quarter. What makes that look like choreography is my leans. Two leans right, two leans left, then back and forth. And then we have this funky look. Here we go. Back and forth. Go back to the worm here and here. Then the brushes, shoulders, shoulders. Roll your fists low to high. 
and drop them down and you're ready for a hand jive. Now, as the music goes across the screen, you may see some more complicated choreography listed above the um, music. Hand jive works great if you want to simplify or if you want the full choreography. There is a free video on alfred.com where I teach the full, full out choreography and it's free. You can show it to your kids and they do it that way. Here's Gift Wrap Riot. Do you see? Underneath the Christmas tree All the presents look so fine Some are yours and some are mine Even though they're wrapped like art Soon they will be torn apart Not to worry or to stress Songs like that are just so fun for motivating and, and energizing your kids. If you have a group that sometimes is shy about making sound, that's not going to be a problem there. They're going to be so jazzed up, they'll really be producing sound. You might actually have to tell them, careful, careful, singing voices on something like that. But I find that very, very useful. It just captures the spirit. And when mom and dad come to the assembly or the performance, it's the one that everyone talks about afterwards. That song is part of a new musical, a 35-minute musical called Secret Santa, a choir room Christmas. That means the set for this show is nothing more than some choral risers and a desk. The costumes for this show are nothing more than what kids wear to school on a normal day. So that should make it nice and easy. Here's a video to tell us more. Secret Santa, the musical. A Choir Room Christmas by Andy Beck and Brian Fisher with additional music by Sally Albrecht, Jay Althaus, and Mark Weston. Good morning, class! It's time to get started! Let's all take our places on the risers. So, what's the plan today, Miss Myers? I'd like to practice our opening number. The spirit of the season? That's right, Jesse. That's the one.
There are only three rehearsals until the holiday concert when dedicated choir director Miss Myers hatches a plan to boost the Christmas cheer of her singers. With a little help from their supportive school principal, six featured students, plus as many extras as fit on your risers, soon find themselves fully invested in the spirit of the season. practice our music at all. Huh? Secret Santa. Everybody write your name. Secret Santa. This is how we're gonna start the game. Secret Santa. Fold it up and after that. Secret Santa. Put your name into the Santa Claus hat. Whether I have you or you have me, we're gonna put a Christmas present underneath the Christmas tree. Straightforward production notes and complete choreography for seven upbeat original songs lead the way to a festive and heartwarming 30-minute presentation. We're having a gift Okay, let's switch over from Christmas to Hanukkah. I've got an arrangement here that was originally written for the Young People's Chorus of New York City. It's a contemporary pop influenced uh, arrangement that kind of puts a new spin on the traditional Hanukkah song, Mao Tsur. Matt Pod has a gentle piano uh, groove that provides a fresh framework for this traditional melody. And of course, we include the Hebrew pronunciation and translation guide in the music for you. To introduce this piece to your uh, singers, you might start by teaching the first eight measures of the melody to everyone in unison. That's exactly how the arrangement begins. Then when you flip over to measure 28, you'll see that same melody now broken up into some echo singing between the two parts. So you've learned two sections that can really be an anchor for your students as they go back and learn the harmony parts that go in between. Uh, this piece is also available in Smart Music, which is another great way to help your students learn those harmony parts. Let's listen to Mao Tsur. Thank you. 
it's impossible to fit all of our wonderful new music into just one session. So if you are interested in some specifically holiday music, please check out our Merry and Bright pre-recorded reading session. It's available now and you can easily access it for free. It has carol arrangements, winter songs, Hanukkah songs, familiar standards, new pop tunes, all these great pieces for your wintertime programs. Michaela is going to drop a link in the chat uh, to this session for you. We will also have it on our Alfred Coral YouTube page. And next week, you'll get a link to it in your follow up email. So be sure to check out Mary and Bright. Have you ever heard of a bear with wings or a Biffalo Buffalo Bison? Well, these are just Sorry, these are just a couple of the amusing animals that make an appearance in these uh, playful lyrics by A.A. A. Milne. You might know A.A. A. Milne better as the author of the Winnie the Pooh books. In Down to the Zoo, Katie O'Connor Ballantyne has crafted a clever children's choral that is just as pedagogical as it is cute, with lots of independent counter lines and really logical two-part harmonies. You'll want your group to perform this with really crisp consonants to make the most of these patter-like words. And there's a great soundtracks accompaniment that really adds to the fun. Let's hear Down to the Zoo. that elephant at the end. What a fun little touch. Okay, the composer of our next piece is Andrew Brune, and he's been inspired by one of his personal heroes, uh, Fred Rogers. Andrew is passionate about the impact and philosophy of Mr. Rogers, and this piece is a tribute to his legacy. It's sweet and delicate with heartfelt lyrics, just as you would expect uh, from a tribute to Mr. Rogers. I want to show you something kind of cool about this piece. The number 143 was very important to Mr. Rogers. He said it takes one letter to say I, four to say love, and three to say you. So Andrew has kept that in mind and translated that idea into pitch degrees to get do, fa, mi. So listen for that pattern uh, to come up a few times during the song as we listen to kindness and love. Kindness and 
Gosh, that is just so sweet. Very well conceived. So the next one is a fun song. I had fun writing something this year about an unusual subject. I did get inspired on a rainy day when I was holding, yes, my favorite umbrella. The next song is sort of an ode to the umbrella. After all, it's a very useful tool, right? It keeps us dry when it's raining. It gives us shade when it's sunny out. I just had to sing its praises. So I challenged myself to do something kind of silly and rhyme with the word umbrella. So what could I think of right off the top of my head? Well, the color yellow. I say it's such a handy fella. Later on, I say it's got style like Cinderella. There's a private joke at the end to singers that we're going to sing it a cappella. So I hope that you'll find a couple laughs along the way with this two-part piece. Now, I, I haven't officially staged it, but if you have never seen umbrella choreography on stage, it is so effective and fun, not difficult to do. So here are a couple ideas I have. You know, you could have everybody with a pop-up umbrella, so at the push of a button, they open on cue, and sort of open them up sections of the choir at a time. So this gang opens up, and then the folks in the middle, and then the next group, and then the next group, and slowly you have all these umbrellas popping up. Uh, side note, don't ask me why I have drink umbrellas on my desk. <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> Actually, they're for this. Okay, what else can we do then, Andy? After all the umbrellas are open, we could count off by ones and twos and sort of lift and lower on cue. This is a waltz setting, so you can also do a really nice sway. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, to sort of show that lilt visually. One of my favorite things, of course, is everybody tip their elbow down facing, or their um, umbrella facing forward, and do a little spin, spin, spin. So I think that would work very well in the verses. I hope you enjoy and get a few giggles. The umbrella.
<laughs> and singers can take great pride in holding that um longer and longer each verse. I sort of picture them thinking of their next rhymes while they hold umbrella. The next piece was a commission that began for me about two and a half years ago, actually. I was writing for a group in Evanston, Illinois, and Jim Smith, their conductor, wanted a song to send the message that every single person in his choir room is an important piece of the fabric. Basically, it's a diversity, equity, and inclusion text, but this began before I even knew the term DEI. Now, I personally think choir directors have always been very, very good with this subject. Haven't you always welcomed to the Coral Risers different faces, different voices, different backgrounds, different people? After all, the more unique the contributors, the more beautiful the final choral sound. Now, as adults on this topic, we can get very heady and uh, have, have a hard time putting it into words how we feel about it. So one of the goals in writing this was to create words that were really brought down to a child's level and easily understandable as a gateway to open up some important conversations if you want to have those in your classroom. It's as simple as this. Each and every one of us, as you conduct those beautiful singers this year, you can look face to face, person to person, with appreciation for every single one of them. Oh, one thing before we hit play. Uh, I do hope that you will sort of see the symbolism by the end of the piece. Every section has divided into further voice parts. So we get layers and layers and layers of diversity that end up at the end in perfect unison. That's the symbolism.
That is really, really lovely, Andy. Thank you for that. I have a few housekeeping notes for you before we get to our last piece. First of all, I had to skip a one product in our packet, which was the sing-along slides. So be sure to click on those links in your packet to check out these songs. They are great. You can project them in class. There's a song for every month of the year, every season, and special holidays and, and occasions. So very useful. We have a certificate of attendance for you. Michaela is dropping a link for that into the chat so you can download. The next link is going to a quick survey and we would really like to hear from you about this session and also what you would like to see us include in future Alfred Elementary Choral Reading Sessions. As a thank you for completing that survey, you are going to get a 20% off promo code that you can use on alfred.com for any of these products or anything else on the website as well. And I hope you'll join our email list. It's the best way to stay up to date on our new publications, upcoming events, blog posts, and we often send out free activities that you can use in your classroom. You can sign up for the email list through the survey or go to alfred.com. Then some important links in your digital packet. In addition to all of the music that we looked at today, there are some catalogs that you can check out, including that 2021 choral catalog and 2021 classroom catalog. Those are digital catalogs new this year. Be sure to check those out. And if you want any further information on the classroom resources, there's the new classroom resources booklet. Thank you, Krista. But you know, we're not done today. We do have a finale. And if you're a middle school or high school teacher as well, please join us for the sessions that follow today. In about 30 minutes from now, we'll be doing our middle school session, a completely different packet of materials there. And then the high school session begins at 1.30 central time today. I hope you'll tune in for that. I'm going to take us to our finale right now, which is really about something that we've really been missing for a while, that sense of community when we sing together, how it really bonds us together, and how we will take special memories from music with us all through our lives. So this is a great song for the end of the year, maybe, or moving up ceremonies as friendships that are made are celebrated. This is John Florio's original song and my arrangement of I'll Remember You.
You know, I'm going to bring it full circle now. And not only do I remember that activity, the art project with listening to classical music that my elementary teacher, but I remember her and what a difference she made in my life, even now. And that's what you do in the lives of these kids every day. Thank you all for what you do. And thank you for tuning in.